Oh my God, hello. I'm Nate, very happy to be here. Get this, guys. Not long ago, my boyfriend Cody, awful name, great guy, said to me, I'm gonna do a triathlon and you have to come and watch and don't be a bitch. That's what he said to me, right? So I was like, I can do that, because I'm like really nice. So the first thing he did was find a triathlon group on the internet called the Mountain Goats. And they have that written on the back of their t-shirts, like they're okay with people knowing that. Anyway, <laughs> they're all counting their steps. You know, people that count steps, we're all dealing with those people, just counting the steps and just counting the steps. <laughs> I'm in the step club at work, gotta hit 10,000, gotta hit 10,000. No lift for me today, I'm counting the steps. If you're over two years old, no one gives a shit how many steps you took today. <laughs> you stop counting at two, you know? And they've all got these watches that they plug into laptops and all these graphs and shit come up. Um, here's a little rule. The more things your watch can do, the less time people want to spend with you, dickhead. <laughs> Put that on a sticker, you know what I mean? So he starts getting real fit and he asks me to join him. He's like, come jogging, Nath. Come jogging. Come jogging. Come jogging. No, joggers are always the one that finds the dead body. <laughs> Whenever you see the words of the jogger, they're followed by made the grim discovery early this morning. <laughs> your little fit bitch should count your steps and how many corpses you had to jump over on the way to work today. <laughs> Too dangerous. The triathlon was in Noosa on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. I hate all of those words. <laughs> and it was on a Sunday, day of rest, at 7 a.m. because fit people say shit like early bird gets the worm and up in Adam. <laughs> If Cody's up before 10, he has active wear on. If I'm up before 10, I have a dressing gown on, talking to a news crew, going, oh, I heard a bang, then I saw the flames. <laughs> and I went up there to Noosa for the triathlon. 8,000 people do it. 8,000 people that you don't want to talk to at a party in one spot. <laughs> Just this ocean of lycra and positivity. They're all called Natalie for some reason. <laughs> I rock up in my Melbourne gear, skinny jeans, beanie, coffee. I'm like pineapple on pizza. I should just fuck off. I don't belong. <laughs> I don't belong. I'm trying to fit in. Cody takes off, does his triathlon, takes like three hours, right? No seat for me, hold your applause. Finishes his, his triathlon and I go up to him and I actually took the moment in and what he had just done and I was actually really, really proud of myself. <laughs> for being there so early. And I was like, cool, well done, Cody. I'm proud of you. Let's go home and do my favorite Sunday activity, sleep. And he goes, we can't leave yet. I said, why not? He said, we have to wait for everyone that entered to finish. It's a secret rule in triathlon. It's a community spirit. I was like, hang on, I want to lose another hour or two of my Sunday to watch someone I've never met finish a triathlon? Oh, I wish. Get this, some 83-year-old man entered the triathlon and it took this piece of shit seven and a half hours. <laughs> I lost my whole Sunday because some old coot refused to kick the bucket. <laughs> there is nothing worse than the elderly with a zest for life. Know your place. <laughs> And I waited and we waited and we waited for Father Time to appear and he finally did, just dragging his sultana body on the concrete. <laughs> Nothing but the sound of bones crackling, a couple of vultures ready for lunch up ahead. People yelling out shit like, you're an inspiration. I'm like, he can't hear you. <laughs> if you're over 80 and it's not Anzac Day, get off the road, mate. <laughs> Guys, I've been Nate Barrow. Thank you very much.